Hi everyone, welcome back to my line following robot making series. In the previous part, I showed how to write the code for reading and processing sensor values. Today, we're moving forward to an exciting step. I'll be showing you through the complete coding process for the motor control function, step by step. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you never miss any of my upcoming videos. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB. JLCPCB provides easy, affordable, and reliable PCB and PCBA solutions. For this project, I designed my PCB using EasyEDA and exported the Gerber files. Then, I created a new account on JLCPCB. To place my order, I simply uploaded the Gerber file to their website, selected the quantity and color options, and finalized the order. You can get 5 high-quality PCBs for just $2. What's more impressive is that JLCPCB provides real-time tracking of the entire production process, so you know exactly what stage your order is in. After a few days, the PCBs arrived at my doorstep. Then I assembled the board with the required component. Then I tested PCB and everything worked perfectly. If you're looking for a smooth, affordable, and professional PCB manufacturing experience, JLCPCB is the way to go. For this series, I'm using my custom-designed PCB carrier board made specifically for line-following robot. You can order this board directly from us, and when you purchase it, you'll receive a fully functional operating system with an OLED display, which is completely free with the carrier board. To place an order, simply visit our Instagram or Facebook page. For the right motor connection, the two output pins A01 and A02 are connected to the motor terminals. The control signals are connected as follows. PWMA is connected to Arduino pin D3 for speed control. AIN2 is connected to Arduino pin D2 for forward movement, and AIN1 is connected to Arduino pin D4 for backward movement. And for the left motor connection, the two output pins B01 and B02 are connected to the motor terminals. The control signals are connected as follows. PWMB is connected to Arduino pin D9 for speed control, BIN1 is connected to Arduino pin D5 for forward movement, and BIN2 is connected to Arduino pin D6 for backward movement. Alright, let's jump into the coding part. First, I create a new tab dedicated to the motor control section. Inside this tab, I define a function named motor, which accepts two integer values, LPWM for the left motor and RPWM for the right motor. These values control both the speed and direction of each motor. You can call this function from anywhere in your code with two PWM values. If the value is positive, the motor will move forward. If it's negative, the motor will move backward. The magnitude of the PWM value determines the motor's speed. Next, I write the logic to handle forward and backward movement. For example, if LPWM is greater than zero, I set the left motor's forward pin high and backward pin low. If it's less than zero, I reverse the pins to move the motor backward. Let's visualize this. When the forward pin is high, the motor rotates forward. When the backward pin is high, it rotates in reverse. Then I'm defining the left motor forward and backward pins at the beginning of the code. After setting up the pins for both the left and right motors, I apply the same logic to the right motor using the RPWM value. To ensure values remain valid, I use the constrain function to limit both LPWM and RPWM between minus 255 and plus 255. I then use analog write to send the PWM value to the motor driver's speed control pin, applying the ABS function so the PWM signal never becomes negative. Then I'm defining the motor speed control pin at the beginning of the code. It's important to connect these speed control pins to Arduino PWM supported pins only. 
In the setup function, I configure all motor control pins as output. For clarity, I arrange the pin definitions neatly and add comments indicating which pin controls which function. I also use the serial monitor to display the current left and right motor values in real time. I then read the state of button 2. When it's pressed, the motor function is called with the given LPWM and RPWM values. So I need to find the button 2 pin for Arduino. The button pin is set up with Arduino's internal pull-up resistor so it stays high when not pressed. Keeping this motor control function inside the while loop to run it continuously. I also note the pin mappings for both the L298N and TB6612 FNG motor drivers, so you can follow along no matter which one you're using. To calibrate the motors, I start by running the robot forward at a speed of 100. Then I'm uploading the code to the Arduino. After uploading the code, I press button 2 to start the program. Ideally, both motors should rotate forward at the set speed. However, here the left motor rotates backward. I'm simply swapping the motor wires on the driver to fix the direction. Now it's fixed. Both motors are rotating in the forward direction as the logic given in the code. Now, once both motors move correctly, but it's not enough. We have to also observe with different logic. For example, I set the left motor to 255 and then to 100, checking if it rotates at maximum speed and responds as expected. This confirms that the motor calibration is correct. For additional testing, I try different speed combinations to observe the result. That's all for today's part of the series. In the next part, I'll explain the PID algorithm for line following. Stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe for more robotics tutorials.